OK, so I received this exciting email which reads, Hello, wow, congratulation. Three exclamation marks, but only one congratulation. Hmm. It is a great pleasure to inform you that you emerge winner to the sum of €1,750,000. For more inquiries, contact John Rosa through his email address. Yours faithfully, online coordinator. S- Hello, wow indeed. I can't tell you how much I had always hoped to emerge winner to this sum. Looks like it's time to go scam baiting again. Before we begin, just a usual quick note about this channel. I make a variety of content. Don't be surprised if the video following this one is about food, nature, or some random other stuff. It's what I do. So wow, congratulations indeed. What an exciting email to have received from... Hang on a moment. I just need to correct this apostrophe catastrophe. From online coordinator is. Straight away I decided to contact John Warosa to claim my fortune. Except, here's a weird thing. When I clicked reply, the email address was Rev J Barosa, not Warosa. So I replied, I don't remember entering this competition. What's this all about? Is your name Warosa or Barosa? What's going on? Rev John Barosa replied with an email that was an obvious pre-written template claiming that I had won the lottery, the purpose of which was to encourage active users of Google. Well, it's about time. No tickets were sold for this, but email addresses were drawn randomly by a computer from a list of uh, whatever this number is of profile names from all the continent of the world. Now, I know what you're thinking. Obvious scam, right? But wait! This lottery is approved by the Benin Republic Gaming Board. There's even a certificate to prove it. Seems legit. One of the things I love to do when scam baiting is to nitpick at some trivial detail. John Warosa had not yet explained to me why he was emailing me from an account named Rev John Barosa. Now I had assumed that the Rev in Rev John Barosa meant Reverend, so I just asked John if he had permission to use John's account like this. But I was wrong. This is actually the account of Ravina John Barosa, and this whole mix-up was my fault because I replied to the wrong address. Now I want to let you just take a few moments to appreciate the beauty of composition of this email. Anyway, John Barosa and John Warosa apparently work in the same office, so I said that must get really confusing. I bet there's lots of funny mix-ups. But what is this about? I didn't enter any competition. Is this a mistake? John Barroso replied with much the same email as before, but to say very sorry for the mixed up, but we can proceed from here. Oh, John, such optimism. You don't seem to realise who's driving this thing. So this is a Google lottery. How strange. I didn't know they did that. Amazing. Where do I need to go to collect my winnings? John Barroso replied to say, yes, it's a Google lottery. Then he asked me for those pesky personal details again. Now, we could mess around and delay here for a while, but there's something else I want to try, so... I just replied with some of Manuel's idea bits. The scammer had asked me for a phone number, and I supplied the number of my disposable prepaid SIM, together with an excuse why it would be switched off if he ever tried to call me. I was intending to play on this a bit more, and tell him that I had to climb a tall tree in the garden in order to use my phone, but that didn't play out this time. We'll save that idea for a future video. Anyway, I just asked if the promised prize would be delivered in cash. Of course, the answer to that question is no. The options are a prepaid Visa ATM card. Yeah, sure. I believe prepaid cards exist with a balance of 1.75 million euros. Why not? Or a cashier check. Both of these options require me to pay a fee in advance. Of course they do. Naturally. The last paragraph stated that the charges could not be deducted from the prize, almost like they anticipated my next action, so I ignored it and just stated, please deduct the insurance from the prize and just send me the balance. No problem. Looking forward to receiving my prize. Of course, this wasn't going to work, and John B. just pasted in that pesky paragraph again. Now, I just asked if this was a legal requirement, and indeed if John was completely bound by law. At this point, I was hoping he would pontificate about being legal and upstanding. At that point, I would deliver a smackdown about how scamming wasn't exactly legal, was it? But that didn't play out, so let's keep going. 
John said it was a legal requirement, but there were no other legal requirements. I particularly liked the paragraph number three. Be rest assured. Are you sure you're a ravina, not a reverend, John? There is no more legal procedure regards attached to your whining amount claims. You are expected to comply quickly to send the processing fee so that immediately we receive the requested amount. It will help our management to facilitate and commence the registration and delivery of your winning amount by crediting your whining check into an automated teller machine which will be curried to your provided address with your PIN numbers to access and withdraw your funds. We are expecting your response with details of your payments. Be guided accordingly. I decided to inject a little scepticism, so I asked, please could you just indulge me and check those details with your colleague, John Barossa? I just want a second opinion. John Barossa replied to say that they all agreed. Yeah, that's not what I meant, so let's make him work a bit. I replied, sorry, perhaps I was not clear enough. Please ask John Barossa to email me directly from his own email account to confirm this. And so John now took over from John. John, like John, was clearly a fan of Comic Sans and sent a wordy but clearly pre-written email of congratulations. And here is where an interesting opportunity arose. Attached to this email were copies, forged of course, of a covering letter from the bank. Let's just take a few moments to enjoy that. And also a copy of the supposed cashier check I was to receive for my prize. Lovely. So I said, Dear John, thanks so much for emailing me about this. I will print out the cashier's check and pay it into my bank account tomorrow. I had no idea it would be this simple. Your colleague, Ravina John Barossa, was saying something about an ATM card and a fee. Strange. Just one question before I go. The signatory name on the cashier's check looks like it says Jeremy Juggler. Is that correct? Thank you so much for making this such an easy transaction. Your diligence and efficiency is to be highly commended. John was pretty quick to write back. Please read very carefully. You cannot deposit your draft check into your bank account because what was sent to you is the photocopy and for this reason your bank will demand the original copy of your draft check before it can be valid for deposit. The original copy of your draft check is right here in our office. I said, don't worry, I'm pretty sure checks all work from the reference numbers these days. The paper copy is pretty redundant. Anyway, I printed it out and honestly you can't tell it's not the original. I don't think it will be a problem. What's the name of the gaming board signatory? I mean, it isn't important, but I just have to know. Is it Jeremy Juggler? It looks like it says that. Thanks again for your diligence and attention. I'll let you know as soon as the check clears. Well, we never did find out about Jeremy Juggler, and it turns out that when you do this, when you claim that you're taking the scammer's document to a bank, they pretty much clam up. Obviously, if I had tried to present this fake check, someone at the bank would tell me I'm being scammed, and the game would be up. But let's press on and see if we can get the scammer back on the hook. I said... Just a quick update to let you know the cheque is paid into my bank. As I expected, it didn't matter that it was only a copy, as the routing and serial numbers are the important parts. And these were very readable on the scan you sent. The funds are now showing in my account balance. Pretty amazing to see. But there's a 24-hour clearance period, so I can't start spending my winnings until just after lunchtime tomorrow. The anticipation is quite exciting. I think I'm going to buy a boat. No reply, so I waited a day and I said, Hi Johns. There seems to be a little delay in the clearance of the funds. The bank initially said 24 hours after deposit, but it seems that I am as yet unable to begin spending my winnings. Any ideas why this might be? Still nothing, so I waited three days and said, Dear Johns, Warosa and Barosa, I don't understand why you've stopped responding at this critical point in the transaction. I still need your help. Please forgive me if there is some prevailing reason for your inability to respond. Perhaps it is the weekend in your part of the world. It's Tuesday where I live. Again, nothing. Three more days and this was my last ditch attempt. Dear Johns, I am sorry to report that the cheque did not clear my bank and I don't have the funds now after all. This is a big disappointment. Please advise what I should do next. That got a bite and John W replied from John B's email address. Please read very carefully. Very sorry that your draft cheque did not clear into your bank account but it's all your fault because you did not follow instruction A. You was supposed to receive the original copy of your draft check by De Hull Courier Service, but you insist on working with the photocopy, which it's not valid, and for this reason the original copy of your draft check will be sent to you as a parcel before it can be valid for deposit. The original copy of your draft check is right here in our office, and we will be able to clear it into your bank account as soon as you receive it. Very serious stuff, no doubt. So I asked, Dear John, why are you using John's email account instead of your own? This is very confusing for me. Also, what do I need to do next? John W. replied, I sent you an email with the other email, but it's not going through. That's why I used this one. Question. Which courier office is close to you? De Hull Courier, Oops Courier, FedEx Courier. Now, you'll notice I split the conversation into two topics. One of them is important, the matter of the check and the courier. The other, trivial, about the weirdness of using someone else's email account. Any guesses which thread I'm going to pursue? Dear John, 
I still don't understand. Does John Barossa know that you're using his email account? That sort of thing would get me fired from my job if I did it. Are you allowed to do that? You can just about sense a hint of anger in John's response. He says, Yes, he knows that I used his email. We work in the same office and we agreed to contact you with this email. As the other email, it's not going through. That's why we agreed that I used this one. Reason, we want to be sure that you're receiving our email is. We will be communicating with this email for now till we correct the error in the other email. Question, which courier office is close to you? De Hall Courier, Oops Courier, FedEx Courier. I said, dear John, none of those courier companies have offices close to me, but will I need to visit the office? I thought the point of a courier service is they bring things to you. Won't they deliver the cheque directly to my home? John replied, yes. The DHL courier agent will come to your address for the delivery. Be advised to send 200 euros for DHL courier delivery to your postal address. If you can send the fee today, then I will make the posting tomorrow morning, and all the posting details will be emailed to you. So let's play along. I said, OK, I guess that's what I'll do. How do I pay? Does your company have a payment portal or something? John replied, you only need to buy two UK Steam gift cards for £100 from the store. Then send the pictures of the two Steam gift cards right here. It's very easy and simple. I asked, how does that work? Do you pay for the DHL insurance with these Steam cards? John said, yes, we will redeem the Steam gift cards in the Steam gift card store, very close to our office, and get the cash to pay for delivery. You have to buy the two Steam gift cards of £100 each from the store, then send the pictures of the two Steam gift cards right here. It's very easy and simple. While I was figuring out my next move, John was getting impatient, and I guess he thought he could smell blood in the water at this point. So before I could reply, he chased with, We have been waiting to hear from you, but no news till now. I want to know if you have gotten the two Steam gift cards. I replied, I'm sorry, I'm still trying to find out what that means. What is a Steam card? Can I pay you by PayPal instead? John said, We accept Bitcoin, Perfect Money and Steam gift card for online payments, which it's more trouble-free and straightforward. Attached below is a copy of a Steam gift card, and you can get Steam gift cards in any store. I said, what about coin squirt? Can I send you the money that way? John said, you can make the payment online with your credit card using World Remit Money Transfer, Western Union Money Transfer, or MoneyGram Money Transfer. Kindly choose one of these options so that we will provide the receiver's detailers to you. I caved and replied, OK, I'll go to the bank tomorrow and draw out £200, then try to find the Steam cards to buy. John was clearly getting excited now and replied, that will be fine. We'll be waiting to receive the Steam cards from you tomorrow so that we can proceed with the delivery to your address. I said, be rest assured. I'll deal with this tomorrow with all haste and diligence. The following morning, I told John, just heading off to the bank now. Now I have to confess I left John hanging for the whole day. I had some important errands to run. More on that in just a moment, but poor John couldn't wait and asked, it's getting let and I haven't heard from you. What's going on? Have you gotten the steam card is? Well, no, at this point I hadn't gotten the steam card is, because I had been busy preparing to tell John once again that the cheque really had cleared. But this time I decided he deserved some evidence. So, to buy a car like this it costs nearly £50,000, but it turns out that you can just stand in front of it and dangle your own keys completely for free. So here's what I sent. Dear John's Warosa and Barossa, it has been a truly incredible day. I went to the bank to draw out the £200 for the Steam cards, and to my great surprise and delight, I discovered that the cheque I presented last week did actually clear after all. Apparently the bank had to take it briefly out of my account last week to convert euros to GBP, which is why it appeared missing for a while, but this morning I was looking at a bank balance of more than £1.5 million. Let me tell you this, normally people point and laugh at me for my ridiculous shirts, but things change when you have more than a million pounds in your pocket, doors just open. So I've spent today realising a few of my long-awaited dreams. I bought a beautiful prestige car and a boat named Batida, which means something or other in Spanish. I also bought a beautiful house in a very picturesque little village and a lovely horse. His name is Meatball. Apparently there's a funny story about that name, but the horse's previous owner was too busy counting banknotes to tell it to me. I attach photos of my incredible day. Thanks so much for this incredible and life-changing prize. I was initially very sceptical that this could even be real, but look at me now, I'm a millionaire. One last thing, do you still require me to send the Steam cards? Pretty much as I expected, this response shut the conversation down completely, and I did not get any further replies from the scammer, despite trying. First I asked, I'm disappointed that you didn't at least congratulate me. I have the two Steam cards here, do you still want them? I thought maybe that might just hook them again. I tried once more, this time to both email addresses at once, saying, John didn't reply to say whether he still wants the Steam cards, do you want them? Looking forward to hearing from you. But alas, no reply. A real shame they didn't want the cards, as I'd gone to so much trouble picking out two very nice Steam cards. Here, and here. 
So there we go, that's what happens when you tell a scammer you've already received the prize fund. It's pretty hard for the conversation to go further, but there is still some fun to be had. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.